Brenda, thank you for taking the time to speak about um, the involvement of Belarus in the war in Ukraine. A few days ago, Lukashenko said that he would put together a joint battalion with Russia for said war in Ukraine. Do you think that Lukashenko would actually join a war that Putin is already losing to all appearances? Uh, Lukashenko has joined the war on February 24 uh, by providing Russia with infrastructure, with a territory, with uh, um, specialists on airfield employees, with medics who treated Russian injured soldiers. The only thing he did not provide, he did not provide troops, soldiers, but he did not provide not because he didn't want, but because no troops to provide. They're not equipped, they're not motivated, they're not skilled, not experienced. And he understands very well if he will send Belarusian troops to die for him in Ukraine and for Putin, it will be the suicide for him. They will be retreating, defecting, perhaps they will uh, turn their guns not towards Kyiv, but towards Belarus. And definitely Lukashenko will lose face. This is the only reason why he is uh, postponing um, and uh, why he is doing all possible in, except sending troops. He has to demonstrate loyalty to Putin. This is why all these steps, a lot of noise around the command, around the training, drills, Abkhazia, blah, blah, blah. This is everything to create noise and to show loyalty of, to, to Putin. But definitely uh, he is not uh, one who takes the final decision. Since you mentioned the loyalty to Putin, how much leverage does Putin still have over Lukashenko after bolstering his regime against the protests um, in 2020 and 21? Look, economy depends entirely on Putin. So it's up to, up to 70% of Belarus exports go to Russia or through Russia. Uh, before it was uh, 35 to 55 and then the rest. Now it's fully dependent um, by trade and economy. Second, political support. It's the only country nearby, near Belarus, which supports Lukashenko's regime. Even China has withdrawn its investments from Belarus. They don't trust Lukashenko anymore. Um, third, uh, Putin helped Lukashenko to survive 2020. This is the big thing. Lukashenko was on the brink he was very close to fall down and Putin came, appeared and uh, helped, saved his life. So this is why he doesn't have any leverage. Uh, Lukashenko doesn't have any leverage. Putin fully controls him. And uh, Putin is very lucky to have Lukashenko because he is very cheap. And through him, Putin controls the entire country. And OK, you already answered my um, third question a little in your first answer, but um... If, let's say, Putin actually um, pressured Lukashenko to really join the war in a military sense and send troops, what would this mean for, for Belarus as a country and for um, Lukashenko's opposition in Belarus? Uh, this will be the dramatic, it will have dramatic consequences for Belarus population, for Belarus uh, economy, for Belarus army and for Belarusian statehood. Uh, the very existence of Belarus will be under threat. Um, definitely, it will mean escalation of the war on Belarus territory. It can mean a lot of victims. Uh, and uh, it will be the huge, um, huge change for everyone, for everything. It will be very difficult for us later to explain to Ukrainians that we are different from the regime. On the other hand, it will definitely lead to the collapse of Lukashenko. You know, this uh, participation of Belarus troops will uh, will be will have fatal consequences for his system and for his power vertical. Uh, the biggest risk is that the collapse of the system uh, should not um, lead to the collapse of the state. So this is why we, we must do all possible to avoid uh, this um, uh, entering of Be Belarusian troops into the war. Um. I see. And if you allow me one last question, what, um, wh where does the opposition stand now, the opposition to Lukashenko? Uh, Svetlana Tsikhanovska, who is the winner of elections 2020, has formed the cabinet, United Transitional Cabinet, with participation of major political uh, forces, uh, stakeholders, 
It works with Belarusians inside the country and outside the country. It established a relationship already with neighbors, now with Brussels. Today we opened the office, representation office in Brussels, and we are working on establishing relations with Ukraine and official Kyiv. Um, we are united, we are quite strong, but the problem is that we are also, we have limited impact on what's happening on the ground inside of the country. So our goal right now is to find the way to influence the situation uh, and to um, uh, find a way to help those who continue the fight uh, inside the country. I see. Thank you so much. Um, let's hope the war ends sooner than later and um, good luck with everything. <laughs>